Hey guys, welcome to Terrifying Tales. In this video we are going to represent you a story about my vampire neighbor. I was going out on a girl last night with my best girlfriends. It is a Friday night, and we wanted a break from school with the weekend homework and the teenage drama that went on every day. Whether it is about Annie dumping Charlie for some other boy, or fights in the hallways about someone insulting someone else and getting a suspension, I always tried to avoid the drama that happened around me. My friends would sometimes have their own things going on in life and tried to get me involved. I would only listen and agree with what they said. I am a person of my own and I try to stay neutral. Out of the bunch that I associate with, I am the most mature one for my age group. I am quiet, even around friends, I only talk when spoken to. You can say that I am shy at first but over time I am a totally different person. Angel, one of my friends had asked me the other day, Hey, why don't you have a boyfriend yet? Why would I want a boyfriend? No, I don't have a problem with boys. I do like boys. I just haven't t foo. And do the right one yet. There are no attractive boys at my school. To me, they are nothing but superficial jerks that only date girls who look like supermodels. I was the girl who was average height, had pale skin, long dark hair, dark colored eyes, and wore dark clothing to school. I looked like a vampire. Many thought of me as a goth girl or an emo person but that was not true. One thing that was true about the gothic thing was that I liked dark and horror art. Blood, death, skulls, demons, vampires, pentagrams, and anything in the grotesque category was what interested me. In my backpack, inside some of my notebooks, I had doodles of my own. Some were Alice in Wonderland inspired, and others were inspired by the Victorian era style or steampunk with the clock gears and such. Purple and blue highlighters and some random pencils are what else you could find in my front bag pouch. Those were basically what you could find in my school bag or on my school notebooks. I am not hiding any secrets, well, I a, am hiding a secret this very moment. Before you jump to conclusions about what it could be, first let me tell you how it all started. A few weeks ago we had a new student transfer to our school. His name was Hunter Andre. My history teacher had told him to sit down, there was an empty seat next to me, so I figured that he was going to sit beside me. I looked up when he was walking down the aisle of two rows of desks on each side. I saw him and my stomach tingled with butterflies. He was tall compared to me, had pale features and dark brown spiked hair, wearing clothes that looked like what I would have in my closet. Black band t-shirts, blue jeans and Converse shoes are usually what I wear, and eyes that were a bright ice blue. At the moment they were scanning the room and stopped on me. I was so lost in his eyes for a second that when he finally sat down I realized I was staring at him. I turned my head quickly back to the paper on my desk, blush of embarrassment coming hotly to my skin. After W. He took notes, we were to watch a movie but it was a movie I had seen before. So I found a scrap piece of paper and then started to doodle. I was in the back of the classroom so no one would have to mind me in my dark world. My hand moved the pencil over the lined paper, drawing lines and curves and swirls. I sketched out a dead tree with its branches looking like bony fingers reaching to the gray sky. The sky was dark and dreary above that dead tree. My drawing piece looked like a part of a barren wasteland. The lights came back on sometime later and I was blind for a few seconds. I hissed and so did some people as to camouflage my hissing, and I blinked to get my vision back. Hey, a voice called. I wondered who was saying that. I turned to where the voice was coming from. It was coming from beside me. It was Hunter. He wanted to talk to me, nice drawing, he said to me. I looked down to see what I had drawn because for a split second I forgot what I had doodled. But how could he see it when he wasn't? T in the distance where he could look over my shoulder to see what I had. Thanks, I replied back. I was happy to get some feedback on my art if you could call that feedback. The lunch bell rang and I quickly gathered my stuff into my backpack to go out. I dropped my purple highlighter and was about to bend down and grab it until my fingers brushed a pale hand. I looked up to see Hunter bent down the same way as I was, reaching for my dropped highlighter. He grabbed it and handed it to me with a smile. Here. This is yours, I sent it he asked, holding the utensil out to me to grab it. I was looking into his eyes, and when his voice interrupted, I blushed pink as I reached for my highlighter. Yeah, thanks. I do not know where the lunchroom is, would you show me where it is? He asked. There was something about the way that he talked that made me wonder where he came from. Was he from this century or the 17th century? In the back of my head I could feel the eyes of many girls burn me with their star. Eh so great, now I have enemies. Um sure, follow me. He smiled at me again and it made me feel nervous. As I showed Hunter the way to the lunchroom, he invited me to sit down with him. I hadn't he planned on him inviting me to sit with him. I usually sat down with my friends but I didn't he mind a change for a day didn't he mind. After all, this was a break in the usual routine. 
I got me a tray and filled my tray with a sandwich, a small bag of chips and apple, and used some change to get myself a soda from the soda machine. That carbonated soda gave me the energy I needed for the day. Hunter did the same thing as me and we found a single table with two chairs. Taking our seats, I sat my backpack on the ground beside my chair. I opened my tiny bag of chips that was nacho-flavored and ate one. Hunter picked up his apple and took a bite out of it. The silence was kind of awkward and I tried to think of something to talk about to break the silence between us. Even though there were chattering around us, I felt out of place and plus I wanted to get to know him and why he picked me. Hunter, that is your name right? I want to know why I am being friends with you. I stared in amazement. It is like he read my mind. Yeah. I waited for a reply. He put down his apple and then said, I live next door to you. That is why I know you, Willow. He knew my name, but I don't remember seeing you around the neighborhood. I would have known about him coming around. Where do you live? Do you know that abandoned house beside yours? I shook my head for him to continue. I live there. Why would he live in that nasty run-down place? Do you have parents? I asked without thinking. Number, I live alone. Then how old are you? I asked him. I am about to turn 18 in a month. Just the right age for living alone, huh? I was already 18 and a senior in high school. I noticed that next month was October. I started asking little questions, hoping they weren't too personal. When is your birthday, October? Her 30th, he replied. Meanwhile, I was thinking who was this guy? The lunch period was over. We both dumped our trash in the trash bins and put our trays on a table for the lunch ladies to wash them for the next lunch hour. Hunter didn't he have another class with me so he told me to meet him after school, outside the front door. I told him that I would meet him later and went on to my next class, calculus. Ah how I hated that class. I always thought that algebra was a pain with the letters thrown in with the numbers. I only hoped that it would go by quickly. Before I knew it, it was already 3 p.m. The bells rang for another day gone by. I made a quick stop by my locker to put away all my books. There was nothing to do for homework today. Thank God. I needed a break from all the studying I did to keep my grades up, to give me a good grade point average overall so I can go to a good college. Closing my tall locker door I made my way outside. And there he was, leaning on a rail. Hey. I called to him as I stepped down the steps. He handed me a piece of paper. I unfolded it and it looked like a number. A cell phone number maybe. Call me or even text me he said to me with a smile. That night I gave him a call. All night it seemed like we talked about nothing but us and our life. He sounded like he wanted to say something though. But he never said anything to me so I just ignored it. What made you want to live in that house? Was it because it was pretty cheap to buy? Hey, was he rich? Did he come from a rich family? So many questions flew in my mind, bumping and flying around. I bought it so I wouldn't he bring attention to myself. I began to wonder what kind of life he s lived. I am not going to barge in though. I am not a nosy person, or I tried not to be. Oh okay then. I asked if he had any siblings. He said that he had a brother that was a bit older than him. There was that hesitation in his voice again. What did he have to hide? When I looked at the clock it was 2 in the morning. And I, T was a school night. I told him that we could talk more at school. There was silence on the other end like he still wanted to talk privately. He agreed and disconnected the call. I had to get some sleep if I was going to ever concentrate tomorrow at school. Later the next day, in history class, Hunter slipped me a note. I read it, and it said, I don't know if you ll believe me but I am a vampire. How would you react to that? I didn't he know what to reply back to him. He did have the dark seductive looks of one but he looked like every other boy. I folded the paper and handed it back to him after I wrote underneath his message you don't he look like one. Can you show me? He handed it back to me after he wrote back a reply. It read, I will show you at lunch. I nodded at him and then waited for the lunch bell to ring. I usually am a fast worker and a fast writer, but I was being slow on purpose so that time could pass faster. My eyes kept looking back and forth between the board that the teacher was writ. Hang on and Hunter. I wasn't he paying attention when the lunch bell rang. It made my heart jump. I breathed in deeply and gathered my material and put it in my backpack. Hurrying to get a seat with Hunter, I grabbed what I first came across not paying attention to what I was grabbing. Luckily there was no one around Hunter so I took a seat beside him. In a hushed tone I asked, So are you really a vampire? He smiled big that I could see his canine teeth. They looked sharp, but that wasn't he proof enough. Do you have any kind of power? He pointed to a boy who was carrying a tray. Hunter focused his attention on him and told him to trip. The boy did indeed trip spilling the contents of his tray. I had to stop myself from chuckling. It was Brandon, a boy who used to tease me when we were in elementary school. It felt good having some sort of payback. 
that s what you get for tripping me back then. Okay, I am convinced, I said to Hunter, no one must ever know about this, or even about me being a vampire. Ihi told me, I agreed to keep it a secret. Back to the present, I am wearing a midnight blue short-sleeved silk shirt with blue jeans and black boots with the zipper on the sides. I am going out with my girlfriends to go see a scary movie. They let me choose, and they are going to regret ever wanting me to make the decisions. I looked out my bedroom window and saw what looked like candle light from one of the windows of the abandoned house. Hunter was there. I wondered what he was doing tonight. A doorbell ringing made me come out of my trance. My friends were here, and I ran down the stairs to the front door. I was different from the group. They were wearing bright and frilly colors while I wore plain dark clothing that didn't he seem too dressy. While we were walking by Hunter S. house, I could n't help but feel like eyes were watching me. I guess me finding out he was a vampire kind of freaked me out since I wasn't he yet used to having a vampire as a neighbor. Will, you okay? I heard one of my friends. Say, I woke up from my trance that I seem to have when I think about Hunter. Huh? Oh yeah, I am fine, I said. I smiled at them. Behind my smile, I held a secret that they would never know about me. I was friends with a vampire. All I tell them about him was that he was in my history class and we talk sometimes. I promised that I would keep this secret with me. But what if someone found out, not every secret stays hidden forever. How long could this secret be kept safe? I just hope that it can stay between me and Hunter. The movie was a slasher movie. I already saw too many movies that it didn't he scare me. I can't he say so about my friends though. They held on to each other and screamed in the dark theater room whenever the maniac started attacking the poor victims on the screen. I rolled my eyes and ate my popcorn. Why why does this movie have to be so scary? Angel whimpered. I sighed and replied to her because it wouldn't he be a horror movie. We re not letting you pick the movie again. She cried when someone was getting stabbed with a big butcher knife. I didn't he care. Even if we were watching a different movie, I would they just tried to ignore it anyway. I didn't he say anything back to her. I just wanted to watch the movie. Piece by buttery piece the popcorn vanished before the movie was over. I wished I wasn't he bored. I eat when I am bored and I mindlessly gobbled up my only theater snack. I wanted something else, so I decided to go to the snack bar. I asked them if they was alright with me gone for a few minutes. Hey, I am going to get some candy or more popcorn. You want any? Madison shook her head. Number, I think we re good, eyes glued to the screen and hands holding tightly onto Angel S sleeve. I shrugged my shoulders and then left the room to go buy some soda and Skittles. I walked into the now empty red carpeted room, and I suddenly felt strange being in here by myself, besides the man running the snack bar. Maybe it was the silence that made me feel uneasy. I shrugged it off and W. And to the bar, hello. What would you like this evening? The man asked with a smile. I'll have some Skittles and a Coca-Cola, please. He nodded and turned around to get my drink. I dug into my pocket to find money. As I was doing so, he asked me what movie I was watching. Just one of those slasher movies. Oh, not too scary, is it? Number, I like slasher movies or any horror movies in general. Oh, okay. The money was handed to him and I received my snacks in return. I still could NT help but feeling like I was bring watched again. The only other thing that was with us was those life-size cardboard cutouts of certain movie characters. I hurried back into the theater to return to watching the movie. Only this time I ate and drank slowly. The movie was over and my friends all giggled and talked about how the movie was scary and making fun of each other for crapping their pants. I stayed quiet. I was actually thinking of what to do this weekend. Maybe I could go hang out with Hunter. At his house, yeah, that s what I ll do. I have nt hung out with him besides at school since he got here. From the safety of the lit theater house, we walked down the dimly lit streets to our houses. As we walked along I saw in the distance a figure under a tree beside a lamp pole. I could nt figure out who it could vape in. A creepy vibe coursed its way through me. This person was probably a creeper, or a pervert. I hurried us along to get out of the dark. Confused, Allison asked for all of the girls why? I thought you weren't he afraid of the dark. It is not the dark. I thought I saw someone watching us. I replied, looked over my shoulder to see if they was still there. Angel laughed, maybe those movies are getting to your head. I am not playing around. I am serious. Even if they didn't he believe me they all got home as quick as they could. I slammed the door and ran to my room shutting the door. I could feel my heart beating and I breathed to calm myself down. I paced to my window to see if that creep followed us home. I didn't he see anything. But now it was going to bug me tonight. Thank God it wasn't he a school night because then I could stay up all night if I wanted to. It was midnight, and I was still on edge. I could tell for when my cell phone started ringing, I jumped startled from my nothingness of staring out into space. 
I looked at the caller ID and it was Hunter. I sighed in relief and answered, Hello? Hi Willow. What are you doing this evening? I got home from the movies a while ago. And now I am just laying on my bed and thinking. I can tell. I knew I was being short with my sentences. I could NT help but think about that, that stalker. He, she, it, whatever was like a shadow in the back of my mind. I feared that it d follow me, to haunt me, until I knew who it was. Hunter must they notice my silence because he asked, Are you okay? You sound like you re not in the mood to talk. You re not going to shut me out? Number no, no, it s just, I had to think of. Something. I just keep thinking about what to do after high school. I don't t what to do actually because I haven't t decided just yet. I lied. But now the subject of high school crossed my mind. Hey, what re you doing in high school? Vampires don't t need to go to school, do they? He just laughed. No, we don't t have to. I am just going so I don't t seem suspicious. I guess I already am suspicious enough with living in an abandoned house that seems to be haunted, which at ISNT. Oh, okay. I guess that explains itself. Are you sure you re okay? You sound like you re thinking about something else. Hunter sounded worried about me. Yeah, I am fine, really. I lied to him again. I didn't t like lying but I didn't t like anyone worry about me either. I yawned and said to him, I am sorry. I am just tired. It s not that I am bored which I am not. It s it s fine. It s okay. I understand the human body and it s needs. I l l let you go get some sleep. Maybe we can go out next time for a night. Yeah. I d lick. Be that. It s a date then. We said our goodbyes and hung up. I noticed that the light at Hunter s house turned off. I thought they were off when I left earlier this evening. I didn't t want to think about anything. I wanted to just sleep and dream about nothing. I laid back down on my black covered four poster bed and stared into the darkness until my eyes drifted shut by themselves. What was I to do now that the morning had come? Hunter must be sleeping right now. I stretched and dragged myself out of bed. It was around nine in the morning and I started my morning routine of going to the bathroom, changing clothes and having some cereal for breakfast. You can probably guess what I cereal I am eating. Give up, it was, Count Chocula cereal. Aren't you a little too old for that, my mom asked me. I didn't he reply. I just wanted to enjoy my cereal. The chocolate filled my mouth and I was in heaven. If it wasn't tea chocolate, it was something else sweet that sent me to heaven. My stomach was eating itself, and it was saying I am starving. Feed me, demanding. After I finished I stood in the doorway to the living room. Thinking of what to do I slowly eased toward the front door. Walked out the door I did and outside I looked around. Everything was so bright. I was glad to be in the light somewhere after last night. The cool autumn air hit my bare arms from my tank shirt I was wearing. I looked around the neighborhood and it was quiet. The wind blew my hair. I then decided to go get a haircut in a new hairstyle and go get my nails done. They looked so naked and pink. At the salon I got my hair cut till it was around my neck and put light red color streaks through my dark hair. Loose and big curls was made at the ends of my hair curling against my neck. I got my nails painted five colors, one on each finger, red, blue, purple, green, and black. Except for the black nail, I had my different colored nails topped with a line of black, and I had small skulls painted on each one. Awesome, I told the girl at the salon. I looked like a different person. And I loved my nails. Perfect for a date with Hunter. I waited till sunset to go outside again. I made my way to Hunter S. house, hurrying along as fast as I could. Reaching the door I knocked on the old wooden door. I just hoped that I didn't t disturb him. For being a vampire wasn't tea easy, I found out. Hunter told me that you'd never die, you'd have to hide and try to drink blood and then get rid of evidence. There was still questions I wanted to ask him. Hunter opened the door, disrupting my train of thought. He was dressed casually. He smiled at me, his vampire teeth showing. Hi, are you ready? He asked as he looked at me up and down. Yeah, I replied. Where do you want to go? I didn't tea have no idea. I never been in a date before. Not that this was a serious date. It was just a date where friends hang out with each other. I thought and thought where we could go. All I could think if was fast food places. How about Burger King or something? Like that, we then walked into town. It was not so crowded tonight. I wondered why. The town of Everett was boring, sure, but it was strange even so for no one to be around, especially at night. That got me thinking about last night. Chills and shivers ran down my spine, made me shudder. Hunter must they notice because he adjective me if I was cold. It was October after all, and I was wearing a short-sleeved shirt, with blue jeans and my nice blusk boots I wear when I go out. No, I am fine, I told him. He stayed quiet whether he believed me or not. The lights from the Burger King flashed throughout the darkness. We walked in the door and wanted to order separately. Hunter told me that he d-order something he could sink his teeth into. For some reason that scared me a bit. 
but maybe it was because I wasn't too used to hanging around a vampire yet. I ordered a burger with fries and a small soda, and I sat down at a table. Hunter came back with an apple. I looked at him questionably. That s all you want? He explained yes, I they already consumed enough food that I got sick. It is horrible to have everything you eat come back out. So that s why I am just going to drink fresh apple juice. Do you understand now, Willow? Yeah, sort of. I they never seen or heard of a vampire eating human food. Well, I had to act normal as you consider normal, eating food. Maybe I ll just bring my own lunch from now on. Good idea. I smiled as we laughed and talked about random things. I got quiet though as Hunter told me the story of how he was born into his vampire life. His master, the one who turned him, didn't he approve of what he wanted to do, which was to get stronger and control his bloodlust. And since his master told him that it was dangerous to gain so much power that he ll overthrow him, he left and had been on his own since then. I was fascinated. It was awesome hearing a story about a vampire through the mouth of one. This was every vampire lover's dream. Wow, your master sounds like a control freak. I told Hunter, he nodded his head. I changed the subject to try to cheer him up. Um, do you like school so far? Yes, I find it interesting. His eyes seemed distant, like he was looking at something else, or he was seeing something else pass over his sight, over his mind's eye. It was my turn to be silent. Hunter asked me, I noticed that you weren't he the same person you usually are. You didn't he talk as much as you usually do, like at school. Is there anything wrong? I hoped all this evening that he wouldn't he bring that up. Oh well, so much for that. I might as well tell him. He could be a bodyguard. I breathed in a breath and said to him last night, when I went out with my friends to go to a movie, on our way home, I thought I saw someone watching us. Angel thought I was hallucinating or something, but I know what I saw. And I don't know who it was. Hunter looked at me strangely like he knew something and replied to me, you must have been imagining Willow. I wouldn't he take this from him. Hunter, I know I saw him. I tee there. I am not crazy. I sighed deeply and didn't he say any more about it. Instead I enjoyed eating my food in silence. I thought that this date wasn't he going to be so awkward. Now I felt a little uncomfortable being self-conscious about the few people that were around us. I thought you were my friend, I said to myself. Either he knew or he read my mind, because Hunter reached his hand to mine and small smiled at me. It was a friendly gesture and it made my heart race. Did you read my mind? Yes. You said I thought you were my friend. I am Willow. I am. Unbelievable. He did read my mind. For a few seconds I had forgotten that he was a vampire with powers. He calmed me and the atmosphere around me. I felt safer with him already. Hunter made me feel so much better, made me feel so good about myself and my life. Perhaps it was his charismatic charm he possessed. Whatever it was I liked it. After I finished my meal we walked out way back home into the suburbs. I. T felt good to have my problems off my chest and off my shoulders. However that didn't T last. In the night we walked until I saw that dark figure again. Hiding in the shadows from the street lamp's light, I clung on tighter to Hunter S arm. What is it? There is something there. I pointed to where the figure stood. Hunter looked and then replied, I don't see anything. I could n't believe this, he is right there in front of your eyes, how can you not see him? I ll assume this person is a he. Hunter stayed silent the rest of the night. I didn't he know if he was mad at me lying to him, or he was actually serious. I could n't tell. But it just made me more worried that there was someone out there. Someone dangerous. The weekend is over. Everyone is going back to school. The halls were filled with teens and talk about a dance this Halloween. I could n't care less about it, or any other school events. My idea of a fun night was staying home or go do whatever, like go out to watch a movie or watch some television. Thought you could even read a book. I am probably the only one who reads anymore in the school. I they always felt lonely because of that fact. Good thing I have Hunter and what friends I managed to make. On my way to my locker, Madison and Angel saw me and started gushing over me. Hey Will, love the haircut. Yeah, it looks good on you, Angel said. Thanks, I liked it too. It seemed to fit the new me. Angel asked me so what do you do this weekend? I replied, I went in a date with Hunter. Not like a date date, just hanging out as friends, I quickly explained. Otherwise they would they gotten the wrong idea. They believed me and hurried to their classes as the bell rung. I quickly grabbed my textbooks I needed and locked the door of my locker. I started to walk faster down the hall as the crowds disappeared. And as I continued to walk, I thought I saw a new face. I tuned my head back to look at the other set of school lockers that stood across from mine and saw a tall make. Could N.T. tell if H. He was 18 or not, with long dark reddish-brown hair, pale skin, and deep violet eyes accompanied with dark circles underneath them. Those must they been those contact lenses that change your eye color. He was wearing a black cloak. 
and peeking from underneath it was clothes that looked like it came from the 18th century of England. Maybe he was in a play in the drama club, whatever the reason he was, looking at me, and it was making me a bit uncomfortable. I walked further on a few more steps. When I turned to look back he was gone, vanished. Thinking that I was just imagining things, I ignored him. However, later that day, I saw him somewhere on the school grounds. At lunch I told Hunter about it but he shrugged it off, thinking this was one of those situations from the other night. I am not lying, I would say to him over and over, but he obviously didn't t believe me. I sighed in frustration and went on the whole day being paranoid and alert. In the middle of the week, I started to see less of him and the and not see him, but I did feel like a pair of eyes were watching me. In study hall, at the library, I whispered to Hunter who was pretending to be concentrating on an essay paper, I kept seeing this guy. I described what he looked like to him. The look that Hunter had on his face told me that he believed me. You believe me now? I heard the librarian shush me. I must have been too loud. I de forgotten that we were in a library. Yes, I do. It was silent for a short while. Hunter disrupted the quiet between us. He got my attention. His eyes held a savage look, like a predator protecting its property. Listen to me. This man is dangerous. You stay away from him and Don T go anywhere at nightfall alone. Why is he a vampire or a something? I asked. Hunter S. Face told me that I was right. I was guessing. Ha, huh, so no going out with friends for a while. I didn't he want my friends to get hurt all because of some vampire after me. So I lived in constant fear for the rest of the week. I let my guard down. At home all weekend though. Good thing there were movies and shows to watch. I even caught up in my favorite book series, Adventures in Deadland, where a gothic Alice wanders into Deadland and needs to kill the bloody queen to free everyone. Sounds good, right? Right? Anyway, I had time to think, and I am starting to think that person vampire I saw was the stalker from the other night last weekend. But there wasn't he any way to know. For me anyway. I was a mindless zombie till the next week. Hunter seemed more relaxed so I guess that meant that I was going to be alright. Classes went on usual. Girls talked about their dates to the Halloween dance. Same old, same old. Friday came again. October would be gone in a couple of weeks. It was fall break time. My friends got invited by some of their friends, which were mostly jocks and preps, and they asked me if I wanted to go. We re going on a hike in the National Forest. Wanna come? I hesitated. I didn't he really want to go. I didn't he make a final decision t. Till after lunch, I talked to Hunter about it. He saw that I was troubled and wanted to know what was wrong, I was an open book to him, being a vampire or not, it s my friends, they want me to go with them on a hike, and it just don't know if I d really like to go, I want to but I don't, you know what I mean he replied I think it d be fun and it l be good for your skin, he was urging me to go, I shrugged, why not, without a second thought I told my decision, yeah I l l go, both Madison and Angel squealed in delight, yay they cheered, Okay, meet us at my house at 8 in the morning, Madison said. I told Hunter the news as we walked home. So, yeah, I just hope that nothing is going to ruin this for me. See, I told you you'd be happy. He smiled at me. But now that he said that I was being unsure about hanging out with the preppy students, or those who have more money than a lot of us, Madison and Angel were different though. I knew that Brandon was going to be there. He was on the foo. T-ball team, I guess I replied to him. Hey what about you, what were you going to do, now that I thought about it, I never saw or heard about any of his plans, he gave it a thought for a moment, and then replied to me, I was thinking that I could go into town and explore without having to worry about you, he let out a small chuckle at the end, I sighed and said goodbye to him as I approached my house, tonight I feel nothing, I should be happy or excited, I didn't he feel regret either, I guess I am confused mixed emotions about tomorrow, I decided to sleep on it, I felt good waking up the next morning. Dressed in light loose fitted clothing and sneakers, I walked to Madison's house around 7 in the morning after eating some breakfast, of course. I got there 30 minutes earlier so I wouldn't t be seen as someone who didn't t care. When it was about 8, everyone started to pile in. We all got loaded into Madison's family van and was soon on our way. Madison drove us there after promising her parents that she d.b. Be careful. Looking out the window I saw trees and buildings pass by until we were surrounded by now hung but trees. There was a sign saying welcome to the forest and rules to follow, like sticking together, and no feeding the wildlife. Getting out of the car, Madison picked two of the guys to open the trunk and help carry the backpacks of water and snacks. One of the boys was Brandon. He groaned. I smiled and giggled to myself. It was a good thing I stopped myself from saying something. I didn't he need the trouble. We walked the dirt trail to the very high hill of trees to where we were gonna to climb. 
It de been a while since I walked a long way, and especially something like this hill that seemed like a mountain I probably wouldn't tee make it. So I prepared myself by stretching my legs and my arms. Up the trail we started walking. We took small steps to save our energy. Madison told us as she moved to the front of the group we re going to see if we can make it to the top by evening. I heard groans, more so. From a girl who was dressed in so much pink it made me want to bugue because she reminded me of cotton candy. Cotton candy never liked me, especially whenever I go to an amusement park on a roller coaster. I stayed quiet with my thoughts as we hiked up the trail. I checked my cell phone later on and found that we've been walking for almost two hours. The sun was in the sky behind some clouds. It was almost noon. Today was going to be partly cloudy. No wonder they picked today to go hiking. We stopped for a 15-minute break and then continued. I was in the back so I wouldn't he have to hear any annoying complaints or laughter from the pink girl. I could end he remember her name because she s a junior who wanted to tag along with Brandon. Maybe they were dating or she had a crush on him. I don't he know. I didn't he particularly care. From my peripheral vision I saw something move. I turned my head in that direction to see if I could see it still. I didn't he see anything. Everyone was getting ahead of me and went on to invest. A gate. They wouldn't he notice me gone anyway. I trudged through the bushes. Branches and leaves that dangled off the trees I pushed them aside to get through, remembering where I saw the movement I headed toward the direction. Just when I thought I wasn't he going to find anything, I blinked, and suddenly someone appeared. I knew where I seen him before. You. You were at my school. I could end he move. I wanted to run but my legs wouldn't he let me. Slowly he approached me and stopped a few feet in front of me. He then said, I just came to warn you. There is a dangerous vampire running around. I was officially freaked out. And that s you. I blurted out before quickly turning and running away. I soon found the trail and caught up to everyone. My heart thumped loudly in my ears. I paused to breathe. Madison noticed me and asked what, what is it? I got distracted. I replied. No one would they believe me if I said I saw a vampire, it d be like that time in kindergarten when I told everyone that I saw a v empire and everyone laughed and Brandon bullied me about it. I continued walking with the earlier event playing over and over in my head. I regretted running because now my legs felt like jelly, good thing we were taking another break. I needed water to soothe the cotton feeling in my mouth. I ate a packet of trial mix with my water and then closed my eyes for a bit. Night time came. We had climbed to the top and back down that hill. Madison dropped everyone off at their houses. I walked in the door to be greeted by my mom who asked how the trip went. It was all right except for the vampire that showed up. I dragged myself to my room and fell on my bed. Never had I slept like that. I fell asleep instantly. I went downstairs the next morning to see my parents watching the news. Somewhere around here a murder was commuted yesterday. My cell phone rang. I checked to see who it was calling me. It was Hunter. Hello, have you seen the news? Yeah. He gave a few seconds of silence and said, I hate to tell you this but this is the work of a vampire. For the next few days more and more murders happened. It was like an epidemic spreading like wildfire. How could this vampire do as he pleases and stay well hidden? This puzzled me. Every night so I've been tossing and turning wondering if I'd be the next victim. Hunter had a solution. After school we met in the courtyard, under the tree that was bare of any leaves. So you've got a plan, I asked hoping that it would keep me away from the other vampire. Yes, I want you to be safe so I ll just have to keep an eye on you at school and when you go home. He told me. Are you going to be my bodyguard? Number, if I get close to you, he ll use you for bait or as a hostage. Oh, I sighed. But in a way I did feel somewhat safe knowing that Hunter would watch me. And that s the way it s been. Until one day when I went to his house he was gone. I thought he d let me know he was going somewhere, wouldn't he? Well, I assumed he was gone because he didn't. He answered the knock on his door. Curious, I turned the knob and found that the door was unlocked. Hunter was gone. I didn't he think he'd leave without telling me but now that I thought about it, he probably didn't he want that renegade vampire on the loose to know anything about his plans. I opened the fur wide and stepped inside. I never been inside this house so I was surprised to see dusty furniture and bare rooms. I wondered if he slept in an actual coffin. A shadow caught my eye and I turned toward it, on the far side of the living room, I could nt stop myself but I called out to it, hello hunter, I am not hunter. The voice was a he. He stepped out. It was him again for the thousandth time, I know I am exaggerating. Why are you following me, I asked raising my voice a little. I was frustrated too, I should be scared but at the moment I wasn't t. I was actually a bit annoyed, I turned to leave, when the mysterious stranger said don t go, wait willow. 
I turned back around to this long-haired. Man who lifting one eyebrow at him I asked, how do you know my name? He slowly approached me. This was just like in the forest, because I've a watched over you for quite some time now, he replied. Wait, just how long had he been watching me? The look on my face told him what I was thinking. I've a known you for 13 years, you just didn't know I was there. Okay, this was getting too freaky and uncomfortable. I slowly backed away, he must ve known what I was doing because he told me in a voice that you d hear coming from a parent or a teacher don't he be afraid, I won't he hurt you. Not like that monster that s out there. For some reason I wanted to believe him, his eyes, his face was gentle, as if I were a shy deer and tried not to frighten me. I now noticed that Hunter was strange, his eyes didn't he hold emotion like before. This guy s deep purple eyes lured me in. I could see that he had dark circles under his eyes like he hadn't he slept in a while. Is he really? Are you a vampire? Yes, I can con. Throw my thirst though. Okay, well you know my name. What is yours? I asked. What was I doing on a Saturday, talking with some strange vampire I've a never met before? My name is Abraxas. Abraxas. Cool name. It sounds like a name for a band or something. There was something about that name that rung bells in my brain. I didn't he know why. Abraxas stayed silent. He probably didn't he know what I was talking about. Anyway, uh, you said that there's another vampire here, he nodded his head. He was in my underling. He d gone mad with bloodlust but he s kept himself satisfied until now. So you re a vampire master, he gave a nod. He told me his story. I've a been a vampire since the 17th century. Until the 18th century, I've a been alone. I wanted a companion, someone to talk to. It was fine until the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries. My only friend thought that he could drink the blood of anyone he chose, and didn't he care if he sucked everyone dry of their blood, he was never satisfied, and thought highly of himself, he thought everything was made for him to do as he pleases, his brows furrowed, it was sickening, I told him to leave if he truly believed in that his actions would do him any good, he gave a sigh, never saw him since, I was starting to like Abraxas, he didn't he seem so bad, he stiffened as if there was someone behind us, someone as coming, he then disappeared in a blink of an eye, suddenly Hunter came through the open door. I'd forgotten where was for a moment, my last thought was, Abraxas, what are you really? Hunter called my name to get me out of my trance. Willow, what are you doing here? I thought you were at home. I was. I wanted to see you today and you were gone, should I tell him about Abraxas? I didn't he want to, yet I felt like I needed to. I've a never been so confused before in my life. Well, I am here now, what is it? I came up with random things to talk about, anything that didn't he have to do with vampires, but then I found myself wondering why. I was still thinking about Abraxas, it was like he haunting me, my mind's eye picturing his gentle eyes, why did I feel a stirring inside me when I thought of him? October S here, not that was too excited for like I usually am, for the next few days of our fall break Hunter and I got together when we could if I wasn't he busy with chores at home, both my mother and father wanted to know why I wasn't he going out. Of course I could nt tell them the real reason why, they wouldn't he believe me, and they don't he know about Hunter either. I wanted to protect him so I didn't he talk about him to anyone besides my friends the other day. One thing that s bothering me is Hunter right now, he seemed irritated the day I was introduced to Abraxas, he told me he was doing something and I somehow interrupted it. Please stay home, he d told me, he d never so strict with me, was he troubled about something? There were plenty of possibilities bumping around in my head. I was careful around him now, and he thinks me strange, whatever. But right before the weekend Hunter called me. That was the first time he called me in a while. I answered my cell phone. Hello, Willow, I need to go somewhere for a couple of days. Do you think you can stay out of trouble this time, especially with your run-ins with that vampire? I froze. I never said anything to him about that. He didn't he did he? How did? I've a been reading your mind, he replied. I felt like my privacy had been invaded. It was, actually, it never used to bother me before, so why now, I sighed fine. I LLC you till then. It was daytime so I wasn't he worried about running into a maniac vampire. Tonight Hunter would be gone until this Sunday. But while he is still here I can go out. That s when I grabbed my jacket and head out the door, today I was going to enjoy freedom from Hunter s constant watch, he was like a brother I never had, annoying. I never thought I'd call him, or a vampire, annoying. I was going to town to check out any CDs or video games the stores had. A N A. W album of my favorite band was released so I decided to have a listen. I put the headphones over my ears and was lost in the music. Oh, I was going to buy this. My eyes moved to look to the right side of me. I could NT hold the startled gasp that escaped me. I hoped I didn't T attract any attention to myself. 
Abraxas was the one there. He scared me half to death. I pulled the headphones down around my neck. Abraxas, I whispered what re you doing here, I came to protect you. He said, yeah right. My brows furrowed in confusion then. I sighed heavily. Why this is so confusing I said to myself. He just stood there, looking at me. Those eyes my heart raced and I turned my eyes away from him. To take my mind off of my heart beating and his eyes watching me I asked the sun doesn't he bother you? I thought vampires avoided sunlight. Number, I know how to avoid it when I can, and I've a learned to adapt to a certain amount. A lot can kill me, yes, but I am alright. I nodded. The look in his EY, it still haunted me. I thought I've a seen them before somewhere else besides at school. I finally said after a long silence between us, hey, you said you know me. How come I don't know you? He held a look of sadness on his face. I had to erase your memory. Everyone thought you were insane at a young age, and you became depressed, all because we were friends. I hated to see you like that, and I thought it would've been better if we never met. But I could NT stay away from you, knowing you could be in danger at any time. He sounded like he wasn't he lying, but I wasn't he sure, as if sensing my disbelief he touched his fingertips against my right temple. Suddenly memories that I never thought I had came flooding back, so familiar. Tears threatened to fall down my face, he wasn't he lying. I hung the headphones back and walked to a corner of the room. Realization struck me hard the more I replayed the memories of Abraxas and I talking at night after bedtime, telling him of my day. Turns out he was the reason why I was always protected spiritually and mentally. After I was bullied by Brandon, I'd talk with Abraxas and everything would be alright. I am even sure he asked the reason why I am the way I am. I tried not to cry as I see that my happiest moments was gone and taken from me. Abraxas, how could you? Willow, I am so sorry. He tried to comfort me but I gently pushed him away. I mumbled all this time, you've left me alone? I've been made to believe that I didn't he have friends and had to make friends. Do you know how hard it was for me to do that? Up until middle school, I was bullied. I learned however to ignore it and numbed myself to where nothing said to me meant anything. While I was lost in my thoughts, I felt Abraxas disturb me with his presence standing behind me. I want he ask you to forgive me, but you re-endanger and you need protection, well, Hunter wasn't he here. So what other choice did I have? I surrendered and let him be my bodyguard this weekend. I picked up my CDs and books I ordered earlier in. The last few months, I could NT wait to add these to my collection. My stomach growled. It was like lunch. Good thing we were on our way home. Abraxas asked me you've a lot to carry. May I help you? He was the gentleman I knew from a long time ago. I smiled at him and replied sure. He grabbed some if not all, of the load, it wasn't he really heavy though. I didn't he mind it. I was happier than I'd ever been. His expression in his eyes was gentle and watchful. He also had this dark air oozing out of him that made him look cool and mysterious. He was like my dream vampire come true. I could NT stop thoughts that flooded my mind. Thoughts that made me blush like the virgin girl I was. I've been reading too much Anne Rice and her dark yet romantic world of vampires. And now that I thought those thoughts they wouldn't he leave, we reached my house and told Abraxas go wait at my window. I opened the door and quietly snuck to my room. I didn't he feel like talking to my parents, maybe to dinner. I entered my RO, home set my stuff on my desk, and then opened the window to quickly let Abraxas in. I sat on my bed and patted the spot next to me. He sat down next to me. I, um, I wanted to talk with you. You know, catch up on the past 13 years. He shrugged his shoulders, small smiled and said, I've been wondering trying to take you off of my mind, but I decided to come back. I kinda guessed that's what he'd been doing. I told him about me and what I've done. Living life, is what he said to me. Yeah, just, life. Okay, awkwardness had settled in. I suggested if he wanted to listen to music. He replied, I'd like to. I found my instrumental CDs that I remembered he liked so much. I put in the disc in the player. The pianos, violins and cellos set instantly a romantic air. It showed emotion. And as I looked back at him he stared at me with fascination. I remember this song, we used to dance to it together. Yeah, suddenly he stood up and reached out his palm. With a smile on his face he asked me, do. You want to dance, I don't exactly remember but yeah. I do love to. I took his outstretched hand and got into the waltz position. We danced as if we've a never been apart, knowing each other as moves. When our eyes met I could feel my heart flutter. My knees was about to give out but Abraxas caught me. I think we should sit. I nodded in agreement. On the edge of the bed we sat, his hands still held my forearms. In those deep eyes I found myself lost. I didn't even notice how close I was to him. In the back of my mind was a voice whispering kiss me. As if he read my mind his forehead neared my own. The insides of me trembled at his nearness. Chills ran all over me. 
My eyes closed as his lips descended to kiss me, but instead he dropped a kiss on my forehead. I love you, Willow. I adore you so much, he said to me. My heart beated hard in my chest, did he say, he sounded like he meant it. I love you too, Abraxas. A knock on the door disturbed our moment, I hid him in my closet and answered tea. He door, it was mom, dinner's almost ready. Wah, it was dinner time already, how long have I been with Abraxas, oh okay, I tried not to stutter, I was still dazed, I closed the door and listened to make sure the coast was clear, I then opened the closet door to let him out, he was covered in clothes and my old stuffed teddy bears, I giggled as I helped him out and cleaned the mess up, I told him that I had to go down so he laid on my bed to wait, I felt guilty eating. I thought that he would vape and hungry too. I hurried to get back to my room. Abraxas, did you eat? You don't have to worry about me. I vape and fine these few centuries now. I walked to him, still asking when did you drink blood? He was silent. He could nt remember, or he didn't he want to say anything about his last meal. Night fell, and he stood by the window, staring out into the darkness, the moonlight shining on him. I asked him to sleep beside me while I slept. He did. I slept more peacefully than in the past couple. F weeks, the next day I decided to go out with Abraxas, the warm colored trees reminded me that fall was in the air, he and I talked more, laughing and having a good time, the air smelled of cinnamon bakery goodness, all those seasonal spices made fall very nostalgic for me, even he liked the smell, at least it wasn't tea garlic or onions, I think overall this day was going to be a good one, I d be able to introduce Abraxas to Hunter, and we d be our own little group of friends, sitting inside a CAF, a vampire hunter named Engel had come here searching for the vampire responsible for murders in this town, he knew that thing was somewhere, he then saw a girl and a vampire pass by, he knew this man was a vampire, this must be him luring his next victim, he stood and exited the shop to follow them, Abraxas stiffened, I asked him when we stopped, what, what is it, he turned around and I followed his lead. Behind us we saw a man in his mid-thirties, dark shaggy hair, wearing a black duster with priest-like clothing and a small cross necklace dangled from his neck, one eye was brown and the other a pale blue, I think he could be blind in that eye, I could smell an herbal scent coming from him, Abraxas apparently knew what the scent was, I finally found you, you re not getting away from me he said, he looked at me, are you with him, why yes I am, then you re already a vampire as well, what? This man was crazy, he then lunged forward at me with daggers, I closed my eyes and instinctively held my hands up to shield myself, I waited to feel the blades, but didn't he? I slowly opened my eyes to see Abraxas in front of me, his hands holding the blades of the daggers and bleeding, Abraxas, run I did as he said, I ran to Hunter S. house, maybe he could help out, because I knew one thing for sure, Abraxas wasn't he the vampire who killed those innocent people, please be home, please be home. That is all I could think as my legs moved me to Hunter S. house, it seemed to take forever to get the grievy evening sun was coming soon so I had to hurry and get help, I hoped that Abraxas would be alright, the old house appeared some time later and I was relieved, I twisted the knob to find it unlocked, opening the door I saw Hunter standing there like he was waiting for me, he saw me and embraced me me gently, I panted to catch my breath, what is wrong he asked, I stayed silent for a bit while I tried to calm my aching lungs, then I tried to say what I needed to, what, bought you home, I asked in between breaths, you, he replied, you didn't he answer my question, I took in some deep breaths and said, I think there is a vampire hunter in town and he is going to come after you next, next, I answered his question, yeah, I met another vampire named Abraxas, who apparently was my friend long time ago, oh really, the voice he used kinda scared me, it was as if he knew who Abraxas was, but they were couple of 100 years or more apart, there would vape in no way that they cool, do you know each other, Hunter never told me the names of any other vampires he met, if any, so I assumed that he was a loner, you re okay then, yeah good. The snarl that escaped his mouth was predatory, he didn't he want me around Abraxas, why Hunter lifted my chin to make me look up at him, his eyes seemed so hypnotizing that I could nt look away, I could then feel Hunter s face to my neck, his breath blowing on me, I anticipated what he was going to do, but why I told him that I didn't he want to be bitten against my will, something was wrong. I could nt move, I felt the pinpricks of his teeth at my skin, help me Abraxas suddenly appeared at the door my eyes now focused and locked on him, I saw him with red eyes where there should be white surrounding his dark violet eyes, and he pupils were glowing red, his fangs were bared, I gasped, Hunter looked up and pointed to Abraxas, see he s the murderous vampire, no he is believe me Willow, Abraxas said, I didn't he know who to believe, I was so confused, where is the bad vampire who took those lives, Abraxas then asked me, who do you know the most about, well, 
from them look of things, I they no hunter longer than Abraxas, hunter. The next thing that Abraxas said shocked me to the very core, he replied to me that s not his real name, he doesn't he even have a name anymore. He paused, he used to be my underling, he killed those innocent people. I turned to look back at Hunter and I saw a different person. I saw the most evil look on his face and his fangs grew, he totally scared me right then. Yes, it was Abraxas who was the strict master that I told you about Willow. And I wanted to get back at him. What luck I had when I randomly found him with a little girl, you, and I just had to have your blood. But I had to wait almost twelve years just to get to you without any interruptions. Now, I they got you where I want you. I they been thirsty and hungry for so long, I struggled to break free as he lowered his fangs toward my neck. Again, everything that just happened flashed before my eyes. Everything was a lie between Hunter and I, I never felt so betrayed. You, you let me go, tears burned in my eyes, Abraxas was right all along, and I didn't he want to believe that he was. Help, Abraxas lunged at the former hunter, and I was sent sailing into a wall, the pain that assailed me to my breath away, and had to close my eyes as the throbbing in my body spread. I could nt get up, but I could hear Abraxas snarling and fighting the vampire that murdered people. I still can't believe that I was living next to a killer, I heard another voice and peeked, it was the vampire hunter. He ran and knelt beside me. Are you all right? He asked me. I could NT reply at the moment so instead I nodded. He continued my name is Engel, Vampire Hunter. I must ve mistaken your friend for the other one. He offered his hand and I took it. He helped me up. I saw Abraxas in a rage that he killed his old friend and underling in a bloodbath. He tore open his throw. Egan tore him limb from limb. The floor and walls was bloodied. I found my footing and I ran to stop him and help him. He turned around and grabbed my forearms, his long finger nails digging into my skin and making me bleed tiny streams down my arms, I shout his name over and over Abraxas, Abraxas, it s me, he must ve realize that it was me and cried blood tears, I hurt you, help me he said, terror that held me let go and let go of the tears that wanted to fall, I hugged him tightly, it was over, Engel didn't he want to do anything to Abraxas because of his temper and he knew how it would affect me if he had to do away with him. So he promised that he'd check in on us every now and then. That was a week ago, and Halloween is around the corner. Abraxas moved into the old house beside mine, and we were seeing each other. My friends at school want to meet him, but I could NT just yet. Maybe at a Halloween party. Today after school I went to his house to go hang out with him. We sat on the dusty. Cash and talked about the future. We cleaned the blood about a week ago. I want you to be with me, till the end of time. He told me. I really wanted to but I had school and a life to live. I really wasn't he sure if I wanted to give up my life to drink blood night after night, I told him I am not sure if I am ready yet. He nodded in understanding. But I do want you more than anyone. Do you want to be connected then, sure. I replied, a little unsure what he meant. I just need to drink some of your blood. My stomach twisted. I LL be gentle. I thought it'd be a good idea so that if I am in trouble or need him, he LL be there in an instant. I exposed my neck and I anticipated his fangs being buried in my skin. His fangs broke through, like biting into an apple. Strangely it felt good. I grabbed his shoulders and drowned into the pleasure. He was done and I felt lightheaded. He hugged me to him. He held me so tight as if he was going to lose me again. No way was I going to let him go Agai. Thank you for watching guys. If you enjoyed this telling story video, please do not forget to give us a like, comment, share and subscribe.